Hello everybody, I'm Tim Rogers, and you are watching Kotaku.com. I just want to do a quick, sort of no-nonsense, I guess we could say minimal nonsense, tips video for Kingdom Hearts 3. Now, uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 being a sort of a role-playing game, and a role-playing game from Japan has grinding and leveling up in it. However, I played through the whole game under-leveled. I played through it under-leveled because I was in a hurry, and also because I, I like a challenge, and maybe a little bit more of one of those than the other. I did have to write a review of the game. I do love playing these games under-leveled, though, because playing under-leveled means that I end up being forced to learn how to play the game well, or at least a little better than I would learn how to play it if I were just taking my time and Sunday driving my way through it. So, maybe you don't want to play through the game under-leveled, maybe you don't want to be executing frame-perfect dodges against the uh, final boss. I literally fought the final boss, I had no money, I was on level 40, which was just levels I accumulated through completing main story battles, running from most main story battles. Uh, or not main story battles, but just like the inc incidental battles along the way, just fighting the bosses pretty much. So, I was uh, at the end, I had no potions, I had weak armor, like outdated armor, I was just having to dodge everything, felt great, felt like an action game, I really like it that way. And if you don't want to play it that way, even if you don't, you might, you might be able to learn something from the stupid little habits that I picked up along the way. So, I'm just going to run through these tips as they occur to me. I've identified a little chunk from early in the game, and... I can just grab a couple of tips at you. Number one, I want to say is, use the in-game lore explainer. There's a lore explainer from the title screen called Memory Archive that you can go through, and there's like a 20-minute video. Even if you've played every game in the entire Kingdom Hearts canon, I think it would be cool for you to watch that, because it's very dramatic, it sets the mood. And even if you've never played one of the games, you can watch that. And the stuff that's not in there is uh, contained somewhere here in like these story, or these, uh, these glossary files and these uh, character files, all that stuff is in there somewhere. And all the details that are not featured prominently, they do come up during the game. So that explainer at the beginning of the game has a benefit uh, of being written by people who have already played Kingdom Hearts 3. So it's people who already know what the story is, they're not guessing at anything. So they're leaving out details that they know the game is going to cover in the way of having like an, one character explain it to another character who might not know it. There's unacquainted characters in the game. And then you can also always just look through here at the stuff. I think it's cool. I don't know. There's three realms. Did you know that? Did you know there's three realms? Yeah, that's all you need to know. So, another thing that I want to recommend is, I think, you should turn the camera speed up. And this is going to be very important for the, the way that I had to play the game. I needed to have the camera speed turned way up to 100. And there's a reason for that. First of all, I like playing PC games. I like playing with the mouse. I like, uh, I like being in really, really super, super direct control of how quickly the camera's moving. I have the vertical sensitivity turned down a little bit because it's not quite as important. Uh, though it starts at 50, and I think it's just like crucially wildly too low in this game. And you can turn the camera onto auto or manual. Auto like recenters it sometimes. And I think auto's nice because if there's like a large group of enemies, it will center on it. Um, it, it will like not be pointing directly away from enemies at any given time. So manuals, like, when you want to really be in control, when you want to play it like Quake. So maybe you don't want to play it that way. And the reason that the camera being fast is important is we're going to get to that in a minute, which is that I like playing without lock-on. And I think you, uh... I think if you, if you try to play this game with minimal use of lock-on, you're going to have a really good time. Next thing is you want to talk about abilities. So we just recently got an ability. We just got an ability. So even if you're... Notice there's this ability called Zero XP. Install this ability to stop gaining experience. And it warns you before you put it on. You can actually play through this whole game on level one. And have an extremely good time where you just... It's one hit kills, one hit death. Well, not one hit kills, one hit death. You'll just die with one hit for the whole game. As If you get significantly, sufficiently, a tiny bit far into the game, you'll just be dying with one hit. So that whole Zero XP thing, you want to make sure that you... Uh, don't turn that on unless you want to play like a complete wild man, which even I didn't do. I uh, let myself level up naturally throughout the course of the game. Now, th that's just one of the abilities that you don't want to turn that on. But this is like proof that you can play the game under leveled. So we got this ability called MP Safety. So MP Safety is just an, an interesting ability that we're going to get to in a second. And it will disable the recharging when MP runs out. Only Cure Magic and Link commands will trigger a recharge. So that's... Totally wild. We earned this at the exact same time that we also learned the Cure spell. So, you want to go into your shortcuts. You have three decks of shortcuts. You can put f uh, four shortcuts, one for each face button. When you hold the left bumper down, 
you can then press any one of these face buttons to activate a shortcut. It's very nice. It's very, uh, very MOBA-esque. So I am going to, in my playthrough, I had Cure on the Y button. And I'm going to put a potion up here. So potions are cool. We're going to actually just buy a couple of potions here because potions are good. And my boys are thirsty. So uh, we're just going to go ahead and say we want like 15 potions. Or do we? Hold on. Watch this. Oh, I forgot to mention this. You're going to love this. So, I have him with potion. Like, what happens here is a potion. We're going to actually just uh, give him a high potion. Right? Now give him a potion. Uh, now give him a potion. Uh, yeah, okay. So, we have zero potions. You can equip zero potion. If you have zero potions, you can equip them. Any item you've discovered shows up in your list with a stock number of zero. And if it's at zero and you equip it, you end up like this, right? So check this out. Now if I buy potions, you ready for this? You ready for this? Right, now we're gonna just say, give me like 12 potions. 15 potions, we're gonna do 15 potions. Okay, watch this. Watch this, watch this. So, look at that. He's got potions now, because of that little A, it's automatically equipped. Excellent, huh? And uh, it took me a long time to figure out that you can do that, and I was just manually equipping potions for like half the game, and that's really embarrassing to admit. But you can do this right away. Once you're just run out of potions, then try to equip potions, then congratulations, you're just rolling in potions. So you'll see if I press my left bumper, I bring up this shortcut command down in the lower left. I can just tap it, go crazy on it. So potion is B, cure is Y, right? Now I don't need to use cure. Cure is out of my way, bus. Cure is not going to mess with me uh, because I don't need it. My MP is that blue meter. It's full. Save points. Recharge your HP and MP, by the way, when you touch them. So that's actually a fun thing to remember. I'm so deep into this game that I've forgotten little stuff like that. Now, one thing. Getting lost is pretty easy in these big 3D environments. And you're going to get lost a lot. Unless you, uh, those kids are just yelling struggle. Now, near the save point in every new large environment, there's always a treasure chest that has a map in it. Now, given that God Darn Sora carries around this thing called a gummy phone, right... His android. Why, why can't they just... Why do I need to get the map uh, as an item? I think that's kind of dumb. So now in the config, I also have... The, I had to toggle this on, and I like it. So I actually turned on... Where is it? Oh, God. Maps. So map orientation match camera. This is actually not the default, and I actually like it better. Having it on fixed makes it feel like Zelda Ocarina of Time. Don't really like that so much. So I actually... You can actually turn the minimap off if you want. I think the minimap is kind of good to have. So I actually have it on match camera so that it follows where I'm going. And another thing, I actually turned, because I got far enough in the game, and you might want to do this eventually, is I ended up turning off, uh, I put Keyblade Cinematics on basic. Because when you, when you, when you like, use the power to unleash your Keyblade, and it's on the normal one every time, it takes a really long time. So I just have it kind of, I have it kind of chilled out. So we're going to go to, so you going to notice my camera on 100. Hopefully this doesn't make anybody nauseous. I'll try to be nice and clean with it. Simple and clean with it. So, we're going to actually just go... It's uh, really hard to move this camera not at a speed that I feel like would disorient or nauseate somebody in the audience. So we have to go to the sewers. That's the wrong way. So here we go, we go through the sewers. Donald's not going to like it in here. We have to go that way. It sounds like a little bit of a translation discrepancy that they didn't know if he was saying that way or this way. Do we have to go this way? Probably would have been right. They were translating the script without looking at the game. Always just hit stuff. You end up getting, uh, you'll get some money. Money's good. Money's great. Money puts food on your plate, as they say. So you just go ahead and collect as much of that as you can. So, now I'm going to show you my personal hang-ups about battle. Is, I'm locked onto this guy, right? When I'm locked onto him, look what the camera does. The camera just kind of rubber bands around. I mean, we've all locked onto an enemy in it. 3D game before. However, lock on will also sometimes lock you on to like an object that you can hit. And it's like, whatever. You know, it's it's helpful for if you're looking around and you're not thinking like Sora. You're not like, what's what's in this area that I can interact with? What's in this area that I can do something with? So it's it's helpful when you're like when you're fighting. I like the way he says it smells bad. That's funny. It's like helpful when you're in a in a fight and you don't know where the last enemy is. However, like here, see this? 
What this actually does is this just kind of is a representation of like unhealthy obsession. It's like I'm focused on this one guy. It's like I want to kill this one guy. I'm going to kill this guy. But by by focusing on him, I'm not being fully aware of the situation. So I like you'll see this yellow soft lock. So see yellow soft lock, blue hard lock, right? So the soft lock is cool. If you can acquaint yourself with the way the soft lock behaves, anybody who who has your yellow lock, Sora will go right after him. See that? So just learn the learn to feel the difference between the soft lock and the hard lock. I think that's really nice. It gives me a nice little sublime little sort of esportsy feeling. Kingdom Hearts has a reputation for having an extremely convoluted plot. What it should have a reputation for is having a battle system that acquires like 150 million new things every time. And I mean it's a real party time battle system. And once you get far enough in the game and once you're if you're playing under level then you're getting your your clown shoes handed to you every 10 minutes when you're fighting bosses. Maybe uh, maybe you'll come to appreciate it. There are these lucky emblems in the game. Lucky emblems. Uh, well, also known as a hidden Let's Mickey. See. Use the camera. Focus on it. Snap it. Do I get a prize? I get, I get a mega potion for three lucky emblems. Excellent work, Sora. I can run up this wall. Why would I do that, though? Well, big answer for fun. Second answer. Another Let's lucky see. emblem. I'm just giving you... Basically, be curious. So, when I was saying you're going to get lost earlier, yeah, you're going to get lost, but also, the areas are not that big. So just poke around. We're going to skip this cutscene, because I've already seen it before, and, you know, you don't want to see it. So here we go. Here's a good example. So this guy has the green reticle on him. That's an attraction trigger. So if I actually hit this guy, if I prioritize hitting him, I end up with the ability to use one of these attractions. So I'm going to say, when you first start the game, embrace the chaos. Every time you see a command over there on the left side of the screen that says press the Y button to do this, just do it. Just do it and have a good time. Go bonkers on it, right? So this is actually the attraction games tutorial. So anytime you see an enemy with one of those green triggers, that's called an attraction chance. So you hit that and you'll end up with this. There you go. I uh, I did not press the finish button there, but I ended up killing a lot of guys. So look how dizzy they are. They're all dizzy. So now I'm going to illustrate, I believe, what MP safety is. So MP safety is fun. Get down here and fight. I'm using the Hercules sword. I'm gonna actually switch back to the uh, the Kingdom Key. Hold on. There it is. There it is. Ugh. They're, uh, they're, they're not making it hard for us either. So magic will lock onto wherever that soft lock is. So I've got fire on my X button because that kind of feels like a gun, right? So when you use magic, you earn a chance of getting a grand magic. Press the left trigger to switch between these uh, commands, right? So I'm actually gonna use... This actually levels up my Keyblade. I'm gonna switch over to my Magic Keyblade. Oh my god, am I dizzy while I'm in the middle of explaining this? Sorry, I'm explaining and not playing, sorry. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and go back to the... I like the regular Keyblade. It's in second form, which is its form change, which is available with a Y button after every couple of uh, hits and kills. I'm gonna get into the middle of some enemies and use my Stun Impact, which knocks a bunch of guys out, dizzies them. Again, not locking on, not locking on. This is Devil May Cry 3, as far as I'm concerned. Not Devil May Cry 4 or... Wait, no. DMC. Sorry. Goofy says he knows what to do. Do we trust him? He does literally allow himself to be called Goofy. We're going to go ahead and switch to that. I love this attack. This actually does a huge area of effect. Uh, you're going to learn to love this. You're going to be doing this as late as, like, endgame. Like, and it, it eventually just will be just doing monstrous blasters of damage. So I want to, like, stress to you, and I can't stress enough. He's got an attraction trigger, but I don't want to... We already showed you attractions. I don't want to show you more of that. So here's where Lock-On's good. Where the heck are the enemies? Oh, he's over there. I mean, I, I knew where he was. I was I was just being theatrical. I was being pedantic. So you see, when, when the guy... When the enemy moves, Lock-On being an unhealthy obsession. Wow. So notice we earned a skill not from leveling up, but from completing a battle. So that's actually fun. Is that is that Remy from Red Tattooey? They don't know his name in this game, so they call him Little Chef, which I find wild. We're going to go ahead. Donald got a new ability. Just make sure to equip your abilities. Oh, wait. Or don't, because he's not at a high enough level. Because we're underleveled. He's not at a high enough level to have enough AP to get it. So maybe we could uh, equip him with something. Oh, Donald. Donald's uh, accessories kit is as empty as his pants. Yeah, we're going to go to the mansion, Goofo. We're going to get into a couple of fights on the way. So I was saying, I think you shouldn't grind. 
I'm gonna say don't grind in the game because I, uh, in the end game, I was having trouble with the a little end game thing, or not the end game, the post game. Donald has leveled up, and so I I I, I grinded a little bit, and I overdid it by like a half an hour's worth of grinding, and guess what? It just got way too easy. So I'm gonna suggest doing this, which is just kind of using magic, right? Using multiple types of magic, not sticking to one element, right? Donald wants to use his area of effect thing. I use it in the middle of a hit, which uh, is kind of like a little bit of a cheat because we ended up not uh, suffering the full extent of the stun, which is nice. I actually got pretty good at doing that by necessity. And look at that. We're right back where we were. That's not where I wanted to go. Let's keep going. We're not out of the woods yet. Look at that, see? We're not actually lost because this area is actually not that big. It looks like the woods, and it is. But it's not actually that big. Landmarks are very sublime in Kingdom Hearts. I don't like these archers, so I'm going to kill them. Or at the very least, destabilize them. Again, not locking on. Don't want the attraction trigger. Don't want. The, I want those mushrooms because they're ingredients for cooking. I have a Watera. We're going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to actually hard lock on somebody. I'm about to die. Okay, so dying is good. Dying is good. Oh, so I'm now basically pumped out of my magic, right? I've used all my magic. The only, my magic is now all gone. So now that my magic is gone, it turns into this purple meter. I blew all my magic by using attack spells. I could, I, I, I have enough HP missing that it would be nice to have healed. Would it not have? Um, it would have been nice. I, if only I had, a uh, just been more mindful of my magic gauge. But it sure is hard to be mindful when you're, uh, in the middle of a, of a real brouhaha. Of course, this is all, uh, theatrical and affected. I knew what I was doing. I was running out of magic on purpose. So you can see my meter recharging. And it has now recharged. So, excellent and wonderful. Get these guys from behind. Okay, this is the Sonic Blade finisher for the... It's a little bit of a QTE. The timing's a little tricky there. He still lives. So I'm going to recommend don't grind, but what I would recommend is fight all the fights as they come up. Now let's actually go in here. We're going to equip an ability for Sora called MP Safety. So what MP Safety will do is when I burn through all that magic, it will not let me cast another spell unless it's a heal spell. And why is that? Because look at Cure. Cure uses all your remaining MP. Cura, the next level of Cure, also does the same thing. Curaga also does the same thing. They all do the same thing. They use all of your MP, and this is like a really fun, super duper game designy little thing. Basically, to tell you if you want to heal, and I can also, I also have potions. I can equip myself with potions whenever I want. If you want to heal, you gotta be willing to spend all your stuff. We're actually gonna touch that. Levels, uh, uh, Heals everybody all the way up. We go in here. And uh, where are they going? I don't know. I don't know where they're going. Are they going into a house? Pro tip. Enjoy the story uh, on your own terms. Not on mine. This load is a little longer than I thought it would be. Why load so long? It took them a long time to get into that room. Who knows where they went? I don't know where they went or why it took them that long to get in there. It's okay, everybody. We're about to get into a good fight. And in this good fight, I'm going to tell you that earlier I was saying embrace the uh, chaos. Now I'm going to say, sometimes, sometimes, you just want to shake the chaos's hand. So you're going to watch these. Ooh. Give me some stuff. Give me that parsley. Donald wants to go back to town. I'm a real big fan of the idiomatic expression, go to town on... He was going to town on that pizza. So here we go. Fire, fire. Water. Water. We got nobodies and Heartless together. Cats and dogs. Didn't mean to make a Ghostbusters reference. So now I've got Fire, fire Fyra and Watera. And I'm going to lock these on. I'm going to lock these on like hard lock. We're going to hard lock them. Right? Hard lock them. I got my Goofy now. I want to hard lock Goofy on a... 
Oh my god. Sorry, I'm exploding. Okay, we're gonna be able to get like three or four dudes at one hit. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Maximum murder. Maximum murder monster machine. Okay. So yeah, this is just esports now. Wait, wait. All I have left is cure. Cure resets my magic gauge. Only cure. Now I also have an, an effect called MP haste turned on. MP haste makes it so that that purple bar, purple, pink, magenta, whatever it is, whatever you want to call it, whatever they call it where you're from, it makes sure that bar recovers as quickly as possible. I just got hit. I just got god darn hit. Um, and MP haste stacks so you can actually get abilities that, or equipments. We're gonna get into the middle. Um, I'm gonna get into the middle right here. There we go. This allows Donald, Donald's thing to do max. You also have these things called shot lock abilities. Shot lock abilities are beautiful. Hold the targeting button. Oh my god, just max it out. This uses that focus gauge, that orange gauge there. So this just does good hits. When you're in a big fight, just keep in mind that whenever you're in a big fight, there's probably going to be a save point somewhere else. Now notice, in a fight, if I pause it, I actually can't access the menu, so I cannot change my loadouts. But if you die, you get a prepare and retry option. Just earned the blizzard spell by killing these guys. Didn't have that before. So, now that you have a new spell, obviously you're going to want to use it. We're going to skip that scene. So this adds to my next thing. Here's something about Blizzard that the game actually doesn't requires you to do this at one point. But I didn't know uh, until that point, and I wish I had. So notice that I have my three shortcut decks. Now I used my Xbox One Elite controller and had a really good time with those decks. So I'm going to have this one have Cure... And then we're going to go Blizzard, Fire, and Water. We're just going to have this be all magic. So this deck, you got to kind of... You can't use the analog stick and do the decks at the same time unless you're using... I got my... I can claw... I can claw... I'm not using my Elite Controller, so... This is what it looks like when I try to change decks and use the camera and... uh, And, you know... And move in the game. That's infuriating. It's not right. Next thing I want to show you is blocking. Blocking is really, really hard in Kingdom Hearts 3. Uh, trust me, as someone who uh, had to beat the final boss with no potions, it's very hard to block. Goofy Bombardier. Yeah, right in the middle. Get him, big goof. So yeah, I say don't grind, but fight all the enemies as they come across. Because fighting is good and fighting is fun. And this game has a reputation as just being, as, oh, just hammer, the, just hammer the X button, dude. When somebody says hammer the X button, I'm, I went backward. I'm sorry. You get turned around. You get turned around. And look at that. Keep your eyes off the path and you'll see some stuff. Give me a little bit of that. Fluorites are good. They let you uh, reforge your keyblade. I literally just let my splash run elapse because it takes too long. I can kill faster. It's like, I don't even care. I'm just like blasting my magic out. Every time you use magic, you have a chance of earning that grand magic. Remember that. I got both grand magics now. You're dead. And you know what else? You're totally dead. Now, my magic would actually be more effective if I were using my magic type keyblade. So you actually have you different keyblades. My magic type keyblade right now is uh, this one called Phantom Green. Which, uh, I'm going to use it for cure. It just ensures that I end up with an absolutely full health gauge. Oh, you punks. I'm just here trying to block these guys. At this point in the game, the game is not... It, you don't have to block anything. I'm just... You're being uh, kind of pretentious if you try to block. Donald, give me what you got. You get a good feel for which one of those command actions on the left side of the screen that you like. And you'll just end up uh, using those. and Or not using them if you don't want to, like... I'll use second form, whatever. Um, so now I have my Keyblade as form changed. It's slightly stronger, it does different combo attacks. Another thing I want to say... Oh my god. The map has what looked to be identical. Yeah, this is the right way. So you also have this uh, in-air dodge that you can do. It's called flow motion. Not to be confused with slow motion. And one thing about flow motion is you can do this. You can jump... Jump, dash, cling, press the attack button to do... Sort of lights up. 
You do this, this is like a much stronger attack. And if you have the opportunity and you can link that into your combos, it's going to be really, really hot. Uh, this early in the game, they really don't, they don't really seem to care about giving you those opportunities. If you press... So, if you're locked on to someone before you do that, it's like giddy up. Giddy up. You can also do in-air blocking. It's important. Enemies are going to be using projectiles all over you. Not here, though. Because I'm too good. Wait, what happens if I go back here? Oh, look at that, see? You know, if you you know somebody grew up playing RPGs, uh, and you especially know if they grew up playing RPGs in, like, the 1990s, if, if they're always skeptical of where the screen is pointing when they enter a new area in a game, they're just always like, uh... The screen is kind of, like, subtly telling me I should go this way, so I'm gonna go the exact opposite way. And you go the exact opposite way, and you get candy. Pretty much every time. Again, don't rely on the lock-on too much. Oh my god, I have Thundaza. The ultimate thunder spell. This scorches the planet. I did that because I actually know there's not gonna be... Is there another fight? Ah, I feel like a chump, because I could have used it on these guys. So that's the thing, but I, what I mean about don't always embrace the chaos. Just shake its hand sometimes. <sighs> he ruined my... Uh, I took damage. I didn't want to take damage. We're going to exit here. I want my final tip. Have fun. No, that's actually not my final tip. My final tip is... Sometimes your guys run out of breath, excited... <laughs> is that Uncle Scrooge? Uncle Scrooge has opened a restaurant with Remy the chef from Ratatouille. And we love this guy. So here's my tip. Sometimes the game is going to ask you to find nine things. Notice in the upper right corner, zero out of nine. At one point in the game, it's going to literally ask you to find 300 of something. Can't make this stuff up. And at those points, you just gotta, you gotta play around, you gotta deal with it. You're gonna have to find a snowman in snow. I already got this one. Now I have multiple photos of it. So, for this ingredients one, this took me like an hour. But I'm gonna tell you what they look like. See the little orange fruit down there? That's an ingredient. Uh, there's like these little Chinese takeout cartons. They're also ingredients. Like on that bench over there. Ah, heck, I was just gonna say... I got nothing. Sometimes you just gotta take a deep breath and do it. And then I was gonna end. But you know what? I'm gonna take a deep breath and do it. This took me like a half an hour at the beginning of the game. Let's see how how deep in the stuff I've gotten with this video game in the last couple of days. Alright. That's one. That's one. Oh, they're just gonna keep telling me that every time I get an ingredient. Nothing is ever going to be enough for Donald and Goofy. That's one of nine. Is this an ingredient? No, that's grass. Is this an ingredient? No, that's trash. Is this an ingredient? That's a man. Is this an ingredient? Yes, I can. Okay, that's good. Hearing Goofy talk about food is weird. It's like, doesn't he just kind of eat dog food? Is dog food paleo, by the way? Shout me out in the comments if you know the answer. Up here. Oh. It just looks like we're like, oh, do you see this? Do you see this? Do you see this? Do you see this? Give me that. All right. Five lucky emblems. Experts ring. Experts ring. Mighty fine thing. Okay. Okay. Three of nine. Oh, God. I'm really, I'm really choking on this. Get down. It's trash. There's a box. Okay. Alleyway ingredients, alleyway ingredients. Wait, wait, wait. Oh god, I'm just like bricking around town. Mo the dog? What? Oh, that's an ingredient. Okay. Six of nine. <laughs> Pretty nice. Already got that one. Doesn't disappear. And it's utter cruelty. Um. <sighs> Over here. 
No, this there be the exit. Uh, no? Ooh. There's five dollars in the trash. Oh my god. Oh, another one. Oh my god, another one? Oh, crikey. I did it! Wow! God, I'm just so in the flow. Oh, I there, laddie. They don't know his name. To him, to them, he's just a rat. I think that's it. I was going to say something about equipment. How equipment in this game. Oh, God. Yeah, you get to play little mini games. I don't want to play your mini. I love your mini games. Shooting Star, another Keyblade. This is another magic focused Keyblade. It actually has a really good form change. So I now have two magic type Keyblades. And uh, maybe that's uh, too many. But also. They do different types of form change attacks. So so you'll see, when you go to get armor, well, right now we just have a shield belt, which is literally a belt with like a, a cop badge on it. Uh, and all that does is increase defense by one and none of your resistances. But when you look at accessories, so you, you'll find different types, different like qualities of armor, but there's actually remarkably few types of armor in the game. And I think this has something to do with the fact that the game is a lot more straightforward than you would think it is. So if you look at this, you have ability ring. Power Ring, and Magic Ring. Ability Ring gives you 10 AP and 1 Strength. Power Ring gives you 2 Strength and 2 AP. Magic Ring gives you 2 Magic and 2 AP. The integers are very small in this game. And what I ended up with by the end of the game is I had purchased multiple of each of these. And I would always... Again, you, when you die, you get the opportunity to prepare and retry... I would make a decision, make like a hardline decision that we are going to go all in on magic. If not all in on magic, by the end of the game, Sora, we'll just buy, uh, buy one of each of these. By the end of the game, I know Sora has six get prize postcards, mail the prize postcard, just put the postcard in the mailbox. Got a gourmand's ring. Okay, so we are not going to do the cuisine. The cuisine is very fun. I recommend you try it. So by the end of the game, like Sora's gonna have like three armor slots, three accessory slots, and six potion slots, and you unlock all of this by fighting bosses, not so much by not by leveling up. So it's all just story locked. So you're gonna end up with these accessories. We're gonna give him uh, the magic ring, cause he's my magic boy, and he can actually have two accessories right away. So. Let's give him the Gourmand's Ring, because this boosts magic and strength. And Donald's magic is actually pretty strong. He's not as much of a scrub as he used to be. We're going to give him the Power Ring, because Goofy is all brute force. And that power, you notice he starts out able to equip two armors. The whole idea is just, if Goofy has three accessories, what I like to do, we're going to give uh, Sora the Expert's Ring. Because he's my expert boy. And that just gives him a whole bunch of extra abilities. I'm just going to put auto finish on there. That means that the combo will add. Combo plus adds an extra hit to my combo. So you just want to like go all in. So if I want to go all power, I'll just give Goofy three of the hardest, hardcorest power rings. And I'll just give Donald. I mean, Donald's never going to be a power boy. So I just give him like three magic attack rings. And Sora. It's all about Sora though. It's like if I'm going to make... If I'm going for magic on a boss, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for magic. But anyway, if I'm going to go for power, I'm going to go for power. And anyway, I think that's about all I got. And, uh, I mean, I've got a lot more. Uh, but obviously, I don't want to show you situations in the game that require the sorts of tips that I've acquired. So, you can find those yourself. And also, I believe you're going to have a good time. So yes, Kingdom Hearts. It's Disney. It's Final Fantasy. But it's not really Final Fantasy, because Kingdom Hearts characters are Final Fantasy characters now. And in addition to being Disney and Final Fantasy and Kingdom Hearts and characters and a baker's dozen of wizards and just wild, kooky world building. And just a whole bunch of stuff about multiple spirits and personas and 
just wild characters. It also has a really neat battle system that if you give it a little bit of time, you can have a whole lot of fun with it. And guess what? That's all I got. I was born stupid. I was born stupid. However, I will not die hungry. Video games forever. Kotaku.com. Oh yeah, wait a second. I forgot to tell you what it is that the game doesn't tell you to do until much later. Kingdom Hearts 3 gives you the Blizzard spell very early in the game. And then, very late in the game, it requires you to use a particular effect of the Blizzard spell to accomplish a mission. And, uh... Once I realized I could do that, I wish I'd been doing it the whole game. So, as soon as you get the blizzard spell, get ready to enjoy this. Just point it forward, and it leaves this rail that you can just skateboard on, dude. There's a kid in Twilight Town who says, I guess skateboarding is passé. I think he's talking about this. I can't be sure. I think he's he might just be talking about the running up a wall thing. Get out of my way, Nark. That's uh, Woody. Woody's a Nark. I mean, look at this. It's, it's just beautiful. You can really get around really fast with this, especially if you're, like, traversing a large dungeon. Once I learned how to do it, I was just doing it straight through the end game. And Blizzard doesn't use that much MP, so all the other magic spells, when you get the new version of them, you're going to use them probably more. Though you'll still want to keep the old ones in there for lower MP cost alternatives. You'll never want to take Blizzard out of your MP deck. Once you start using it like this. Anyway, that is truly all that I got. 